Good afternoon, good afternoon, and happy Tuesday. I'm so thankful that you all are joining me live today. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. And those who are listening in to the replay, I also welcome you and thank you for joining me live. And, or excuse me, taking time out to listen to the replay. And so I hope everyone is having a wonderful Tuesday. I hope everybody is safe and protecting themselves. And I definitely want to do a plug in for really, um, I know there are a lot of kids who are back into school. They went back yesterday. They are either in the summer in the classroom, many of them are virtual. And so I, my prayers to teachers and staff and the kids and parents during this difficult time, unprecedented times, we pray that everybody is safe. We pray that there is no school-wide outbreaks. And we just pray that these kids are able to get the education that they need, that they deserve, and that they have that well-roundedness that they need because they have been on lockdown, many of them all summer long. So we're just praying for the best in those regards. And so great is the Lord and greatly is he to be praised and his greatness surpasses all understanding. So we're going to pray that everything works out in the midst of the numbers going up. So today's topic, thank you for tuning in. Those I see are jumping on live. Feel free to say hello, where you're from, and I would love to hear from you. And today's topic is the number one mistake that wrecks weight loss and what are the solutions? And so post, I'm going to put on here a little scenario for you. And I'm going to give you a story. You have two people who are attempting to lose weight. One is losing at a healthy pace. The other is not. They're not losing at all. And the troubling part is that when you talk to both of them, they share a common approach. So they're eating meals that are, they're, they're not cutting carbs, they're not dieting. So they're eating meals that are, that are moderate with their carbs and their proteins and their fats and, and their veggies and all of that. They're exercising at least three to four times a week and they're doing cardio with a cardio focus and weights, not just weights. And they, they truly know how to eat healthy because they are not excluding food groups. So they're eating around the plate. And, but yet one friend, is struggling to lose <laughs> and they can't maintain their focus. They are having trouble controlling their hunger. They're always craving sweets. And despite their best efforts in the gym or their exercise program, they just don't seem to get the results that they're trying to achieve. So which person are you? Are you that slow loser <laughs> or are you that fast loser? How would you, how would you classify yourself? Good afternoon. I see somebody chiming on. <clears throat> so based off that story that I just said, are you that person that feels like you lose weight fast or that it just takes forever for you to lose weight? And it seems like everybody else around you are losing faster than you. And so today I will, will reveal the number one mistake that people make that wrecks weight loss efforts. And you know what? It is not what you think. And so while people are still tuning in and jumping on, I will do a quick intro of myself. My name is Sandra Galtry, and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist for both adult men and women. And I simply want to help people boost their energy levels, lose weight the healthy way, and not just lose it, but keep it off. And I provide practical, real solutions, non-dieting approach without deprivation. And more importantly, I'm really here to serve as a health advocate during these unprecedented times with this virus, our health, our immune system, our strength, and what we eat are really more important now than ever before. And so for those of you who are tuning in, our topic for today is the biggest mistake or the one, number one mistake that wrecks weight loss efforts. And what is the solution to that? I see a few comments here. Let's see here. Hello, Jane. I see Jane is on. Ah, somebody says it takes forever for them to lose weight. And Lewis, hi, how you doing? Says it slow and steady is the best way. Believe it or not, it may feel like it takes a long time, but it is real weight that will not come back. So slow and steady is what you want. So that is good. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> and so let's move into the next question that I want to ask everybody. So post either overeating, lack of exercise, lack of water, or late night eating, which one of these choices do you think is the number one reason that Rex people's weight loss efforts. So do you think it's overeating, lack of exercise, lack of water, or late night eating? And if you think it's something else, feel free to post that as well. But I want to kind of get a feel for where people's mindsets are and what you think 
wrecks people's weight loss efforts. So give, give that some thought and chime in. And if you're on the replay, I appreciate you chiming in also. So even with the, well, let me see if anybody chimed in yet. Okay, so I'm about to give the answer. So, <laughs> so even with the best eating pattern and the best fitness routine, if your sleep is off, your weight loss efforts are severely hindered. Okay. And so sleep ultimately controls your diet. So according to the CDC, more than 35% of the people are sleep deprived. Okay. And a lot of times people think it's normal to get three and four hours of sleep, but really it's not. And when you consider that the statistic for obesity is nearly identical, it's easy to connect the dots and, and to discover that the connection is just not a coincidence between obesity and sleep. And so we all have heard that in order to lose weight, we should eat less, move more, right? It's not that simple. If it was, we all, nobody would have any weight problems. We would all be in perfect health, right? But sometimes you want to eat less and move more, but sometimes it's just impossible to achieve that. And so I'm going to post another question for you. Do any of these scenarios sound familiar to you or any of these reasons sound familiar to you? So between your work life, your, 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 your social life, your exercise, you just simply forget to sleep or you simply just don't really make that a priority because of everything that's going on. Or maybe you don't even realize that sleep is the key to being the reward for your good diet efforts and your, and your healthy eating patterns as well as your fitness efforts. So which one of those sound familiar to you? So let's see, I see a couple of people chiming in. Late night eating, somebody said late night eating, bad choices. <laughs> That's a good one. Somebody chimed in with bad choices. Mm -hmm. So do any of these reasons sound familiar to you? Yes or no, as far as because of work life. Work is crazy, life is crazy, everything is crazy. You just don't even think about making sleep a priority or you don't even realize that there's benefits because of your, your healthy eating and because of your efforts that you're putting in and working out, sleep is actually the reward. And it makes, it, it makes your body work together in harmony. And so continuing on with the topic, the number one mistake that wrecks your weight loss efforts and what to do, here are some of the, I wanna share with you some of the effects of lack of sleep. So I'm gonna share three, the top three. One, it changes your fat cells, okay? So if you've ever wondered why you wake up exhausted, days, confused, or maybe just grumpy. <laughs> Statistics show that after just four days of being sleep deprived, that your body's ability to properly use insulin becomes completely disrupted. And so when insulin is not functioning well, meaning it's floating around in our bloodstream instead of going into our cells to feed our cells, the excess insulin ends up being stored as fat in all the wrong places and primarily the liver. And so this is how we become fat. This is how we become a little heavy. And this is what leads to diabetes, okay? And the other, another effect of lack of sleep is it makes us crave foods more, okay? So many people believe that hunger is related to willpower or lack thereof, to, or, to, or the lack of willpower to be able to control the call of your stomach. This is so far from the truth, okay? Hunger is controlled by two hormones, one is leptin, one is ghrelin. And so leptin is actually a hormone that's produced in our fat cells. And so when we produce less of it, our stomach feels, uh, it feels empty in that case. Ghrelin is the second hormone, which I call it the greedy hormone, because when it stimulates hunger, so it stimulates hunger. And so, and it also reduces the amount of calories that we burn. So our metabolism slows down. And so and it increases the amount of fat that we store. So when our sleep is off, these hormones are, are out of balance, okay? They're out of equilibrium. And so therefore you feel more hungry and we tend to snack more and we tend to make different decisions when we're, when we're sleep deprived. So trust, there are, there are a whole lot of other factors that go into this equation, but in a nutshell, adequate sleep will give you, will give you control to help control your leptin levels and your ghrelin levels and it helps aid in successful weight loss. So I'm gonna check for some comments. Okay, we're doing good, we're doing good. And you really don't rest well when you actually do not sleep. You don't, <laughs> you don't. 
Okay, somebody made a comment about it just not being a priority. And a lot of times because we're so busy in the hustle and bustle, we, you know, I've had I've heard somebody say, I don't have time to sleep. <laughs> and we really do. We're not designed to just stay awake going 24 hours a day. Okay. So I have another question for you. Change my screen here so I can post it for you. Let's see here. And hopefully. One more question here. Lack of exercise. Give me a second here. Okay, I'm trying to make sure. Yes or no. So do you feel, so post less defeated. If And hopefully this is good news for each and every one of you. So to learn that cravings stem from deeper factors other than just your own willpower and the ability to control your, your call of your stomach, does that help? Hopefully that'll make you feel less defeated. Because a lot of times when people feel like they overindulge or if they said they wasn't going to eat something or if they said they wasn't going to do something, then they feel bad and they feel defeated and they feel like they failed. And it, it's it's bigger than that. And yes, our mind has to be in the right place. And yes, we have to want it. But sometimes when we have external factors like lack of sleep for long periods of time, it will take over and those hormones will get away. So hopefully that's good news and that'll, and that'll help you feel less defeated because of that. And the final important point I wanted to make about lack of sleep is it sabotages our workout efforts. A lot of times people don't make that connection. So unfortunately, you know, the disastrous impact, it spreads beyond just eating and it will go into our workout. So no matter what your fitness levels are or what your fitness goals are, having some muscle on your body is important. Muscle is the enemy of fat. And so it helps you to burn fat. It helps you to stay young. It helps you to keep moving. But when sleep or lack thereof is, is the enemy of muscle. So research supports that sleep deprivation decreases your body's ability to make muscle. So, and this causes muscle loss and which can lead to higher incidence of injury. And so I will always say if, if it comes down to you only getting three or four hours of sleep on three or four nights in a row and you're trying to stick to your schedule and, and be dedicated to your exercise, you know, at five o'clock in the morning when you went to bed at one, I will always suggest or always recommend sleep. Exercise later, because if you continue to do that, you, you will not only risk injury, but you, your workouts will not be as effective. You will find yourself not being able to lift as heavy or not able to exercise at a high enough intensity. You don't want to push through that. It's too, it's too dangerous. And so and that poses this question. So in, in you, you're going on day four, three or four hours of sleep. What do you currently do? If you're someone that's, that's pretty dedicated, pretty consistent with your exercise, if you, you're, you say your work schedule has gotten a little, little crazy and deadlines have, have, have picked up, what do you do? Do you still get up? Knowing you had three or four hours of sleep for several days, knowing you're tired, knowing you're burnt out, do you still try to do that workout? Do you sleep in or do you work out? So what do you currently do? Okay. The recommendation is not to 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 work out when it's because you need to let your body rest. But what do you currently do is what I would like to know. All righty. And so what is the solution? What's the solution? Prioritize sleep. Okay, we live in a society where we just don't do that. COVID has forced us to slow down. Uh, and so hopefully people will continue on that track because that was a benefit. We all needed to slow down. We all was going. But there, there are no hard numbers, but it is recommended to have seven to nine hours of sleep. So my goal is always to get you to seven. And once you start getting seven hours of sleep on a regular basis, your body will feel it. Your body will thank you for it. And then Every now and then things pop up, you will get less. But after a day or two of getting six hours or less, your body will feel it. You will feel pain, your eyes should hurt, your head should hurt, you should feel uncomfortable. And you don't wanna push through that. You wanna listen to your body, let your body be your guide, right? That's what they say. And, it is, and so therefore you get that sleep, you get rested up. And so I hear some people said that they will sleep in, that's good. They would get up and go. Yep. See, thank you for being honest, Anitra. <laughs> I'm guilty too. I'm just going to get up and go. I currently work out even when I'm tired. So now that you are hearing this, 
hopefully now you'll think about it. And in addition to sleeping in and working out later, adjust what you're doing at night. Because a lot of times those deadlines, they're not going to get solved at night. So staying up to one and two in the morning, it's, it's, you know, it's not going to happen. So you got to think about what you're doing that's keeping you up and really reevaluate that. And so it, and it might seem like a lot to get seven hours. It's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel weird, but you'll, you'll reap the benefits of it in the long run. And so the magic question is, how do you get seven hours of sleep? How do you even make that happen? <laughs> and so that's a good question. And I welcome the opportunity to help you to figure that out because that is very independent for each person. So simply, I will post some information on here. Simply go to this particular link. And I was told that uh, some people wanted me to put this in the chat. So I will do that as well. But I recommend that you definitely go into this link if you want to figure out how to alter your schedule. What do you need to, to change or what do you need to do to try to achieve getting seven hours of sleep? And it will make all the difference in the world with not just your weight loss efforts, but just how you feel and your energy levels, because all that's tied to. So everything is not just related to food. A lot of times people think it's all, you know, it's food. That is a major part, but it's also other factors that come into the play with your overall total wellness. Okay. And so that is all I have. I am, and I appreciate each and every one of you coming out uh, or listening in. I definitely do. And I, I'm going to post this 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 link on here. That's what I'm trying to do right now for you all. There we go. For anybody who is interested in speaking with me more about this. Again, stay safe. Do your part to prevent the spread of this COVID virus. Wear your face shields. Wear your mask. I recommend children, if you are going back to school, wear a face shield. That's something they can wear all day long. They can't wear a mask all day long, but they can wear a face shield all day long. And it is proven to prevent the spread of this virus. Keep your physical distance, remain socially present. Thank you for tuning in live. Thank you for tuning into replay. I appreciate every single one of you tuning in next week. And next week, I'm actually going to switch up the topics a little bit. So stay tuned and have a great rest of your Tuesday. Bye. -bye.